And today we'll be going over a delicious recipe for raw food. So to start off, we will be taking handful sized bites of this delicious raw food, making sure to mash it up into an even meatball. We will be seasoning with a selection of spices that will tickle your kitty's tummy, and we'll just mix that all in together. Until finally, we have a delicious, nutritious snack for your pet. No cooking required, no heat required, fresh to serve, straight from the fridge. And now, the only thing left to do is to throw it in the trash, you filthy animal. Stop eating raw food. You'll have to excuse me for a moment. So I've noticed that there's been an increasing trend in the amount of raw food that is being fed to pets. It's become quite popular amongst uh, m many people. Let's take a look about what these people are saying. All oh, puppies, man, put them on a raw diet. I am going to start my raw journey with you guys. How I prepare raw food. Feed my dogs, it's called a barf diet. Biologically appropriate raw foods. You can feed it raw. We're gonna talk about raw feeding for dogs. We're going to discuss some of the myths and truths surrounding raw food diets. So why feed raw? It's a great diet. Canines are made to uh, digest raw bones. And dogs evolve from wolves and have a digestive tract that is made for breaking down raw meat. And I swear that the bath raw food diet completely cured her of her ailment. Dogs and cats did not evolve to consume sterile food. Dogs, cats, they're made to gobble up bacteria. Give your dog raw chicken, don't listen to the vet. Raw diet. Raw. 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 Raw food. Friends with food products that are out there for dogs and cats, and specifically with, with dog formulations. And a, a big catchphrase that I hear in, in the appointments is grain free. And owners think they're doing their dog a, a bonus by feeding grain free. Uh, my personal opinion is that unless you have a confirmed allergy or intolerance to a grain, grains are not evil. Um, so I don't think that necessarily avoiding grains are going to cure all the, the dog itchy problems of the world. Um, Grains are important. If you can't tolerate them, don't eat them. Um, just like a, a milk intolerant person shouldn't have a milkshake. If your dog is fine with grains, they're, they're not the big evil monster that they're sometimes made out to be. On a similar kind of avenue, grains get a, a big negative that they're, they're not nutritionists or they're just a filler for the food. Um, I think remembering back to the food triangle, I think grains for people are a big Know, a big item that we're supposed to eat and it's part of a balanced diet. So if it's a whole grain, it hasn't been processed down to where you don't recognize any part of the grain, they are incredibly nutritious. And as long as your dog doesn't have an allergy to it, grains are fine to eat. If we do a little search here on raw food diet, so we'll do a little search on raw food and I'd like to direct you to an article titled Current Knowledge About Risks and Benefits of Raw Meat-Based Diets for Dogs and Cats. Now this was published in JAMA, aka the Journal of American Veterinary Medical Association, so it's pretty much the most legit journal of veterinary medicine that there is. And uh, it's written by four board certified veterinary nutritionalists, so these are people that have spent years and years researching pet nutrition and learning about pet nutrition and what's best to feed your pets, so I think they have a little bit of credibility. Now if that doesn't scream quality science to you guys, it's also peer-reviewed which means multiple people have viewed it and corroborated it to make sure that all the facts and figures are legit. So I've come up with a little PowerPoint going over the, 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 the key events in the article, the main points per se, and uh, today we'll be taking a, a deep dive into, uh, into raw food. Is it good or is it bad? Let's find out. So. So one of the main points that I would like to talk about is a lot of people who feed raw diets think that their pet is like a wolf. They think that their dog is similar to a wolf and that, you know, wolves eat raw diets, so their pet should too to be the healthiest. And um, unfortunately, we, when we look behind the actual science of it, when we look at the genome of the wolf versus the dog, we can see that there are 30 key differences between the genome of a wolf and a dog. 30, and 10 of those genes are actually involved in carbohydrate digestion and fat metabolism. So unfortunately, your, uh, your grandma Shih Tzu is just uh, not, not, not making the cut there. And uh, as you can see, dogs and wolves require different things nutritionally. They require different nutrients, if you will. Now a lot of anecdotal claims that people are making is that raw food will give your dog better breath, will make their little poopies smell a little better, and overall will make their dog healthier. Now, the key thing to point out is that these are just anecdotal reports. So, 
when looking at it, is there any evidence, anything, any proof that this is true? Any sort of scientific studies that have been conducted? Well, unfortunately, there haven't been. So there's been no, no studies that show that raw food diets are you know, healthier for your pet than commercially cooked diets are. And there's no real studies to show that feeding your dog a raw food diet is gonna make their breath or poop smell better than a regular diet would. Now, if we just keep digging a little bit deeper into you know, studies on raw food diets, there are actually studies that show that when some raw diets have been tested, there have been shown to have been imbalances in the vitamins A, D, and E, which you know are crucial for pets' development and health. So, I don't know about you, but I would probably get the O-U-T out of there when it comes to raw food diets, just based on that alone. But, you know, if we just keep, if we just keep digging just a little bit deeper, um, we actually start to see that uh, there have been tons and tons of studies that looked at raw food diets. So if we just keep digging a little bit further, we can see that there's actually lots and lots of bacteria. Bacteria, guys. I'm talking E. coli, salmonella, clostridium, Oh my gosh! Oof! So there's been lots of reports of raw food diets having bad bacteria which are making animals sick. Now, uh, I know what some of you might be thinking. Um, earlier last year, the FDA put out a claim that uh, they sort of enforced a new rule where all commercially shipped raw food diets had to be free of any pathogens, so no contamination from salmonella or anything. But, you know, while a great rule that this was to, you know, try to prevent infection in pets from these diseases and bacteria, um, if, we just, if we just keep digging just a little bit deeper, you know, just really get our shovel and get in there, um, we actually start to see, if we look at the FDA recall list, we can see lots and lots of recalls from these raw food diets. Diets that the FDA claims has no pathogens in it. We can actually see that there have been plenty and plenty of recalls on multiple raw food products over the year that have been contaminated. despite the rule. So unfortunately, you might be thinking that feeding your dog a commercial raw food diet is perfectly safe, when in fact, nothing could be further from the truth. If you don't heat up the meat, there's always gonna be a risk of infection, a risk of contamination from these bad bacteria which are making pets sick. And uh, there's even been a study that's shown that if you feed a cat, one cat, one source of contaminated meat with salmonella. So say I was to feed little Ashy here a piece of raw meat that had been contaminated with salmonella. If that was the case, Studies have shown that little Ashy would continue to shed salmonella in his feces for up to two weeks. That means every time he takes a little doo-doo, that could show up in his feces for two, the next two weeks, even if it's just one piece of raw food contaminated. That could get you or your pet sick. And people who are most affected by this are people who are younger, people who are older, and people who are sick. So raw food is just not the best thing to feed your pet. There have been multiple sources of contamination. <laughs> I can attest to this. When I was on my internal medicine rotation at UGA, the first day I got there, there was two dogs sick with diarrhea. And when we tested their feces for pathogens, both of them came back as having salmonella infection. And the kicker is both of them were being fed a raw food diet. So despite what the FDA claims, despite what people may say, any raw meat you feed your cat, whether commercial or human grade, can potentially be infected with salmonella, with E. coli, with all these pathogens, which can get your pet sick. And not only can it get your pet sick, it can get you sick. And that's the main thing we want to think about. When choosing to feed a raw meat-based diet, I know it's easy to get caught up in the fads, caught up in the trends that people are saying. But at the end of the day, don't you just want what's best for your pet? Because your pet matters. And so do you. So stay away from raw. Stay away from those commercial raw food diets at the stores, at the pet stores. And if you insist on feeding your pet a home cooked diet, just heat up the meat, guys. Just heat up the meat. Cook your meat. Cook, cook, cook your meat. Never forget, animals need nutrients, not ingredients. This has been my TED Talk. Have a good day.